We are very lucky to have with us live in the studios this morning, Malik Rahim and Tristan Kwan. Malik Rahim is co-founder of Common Ground Relief, a nationally acclaimed environmental justice organization made up of New Orleans residents and their supporters, which was formed in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. He was raised in the New Orleans neighborhood of Algiers. After serving in the U.S. Navy and the Vietnam War, he became a political activist. He has spent many years studying and organizing around housing and prison issues. He is a founding member of the Black Panthers Louisiana chapter, the anti-death penalty campaign Pilgrimage for Life, as well as the successful campaign to free the Angola Three. He was also a founder and operator of the Algiers Development Center and Invest Transitional Housing, an ex-offender program which housed over a thousand men, women, and children. And he is the recipient of a number of awards, including the Global Exchange Human Rights Award in 2006 and the Thomas Merton Award in 2008. Let's start out with you, Malik, and if you could uh, tell us a bit about the common ground. Okay, but first I just would like to, I'm praying that Jeff over in Bainbridge is listening to your show, because I know he's an avid fan, and I just want to say hello to Jeff and his beautiful wife and daughter, and to all the residents at Bainbridge who have shown me in my first visit to Seattle, such hospitality, and I cannot end without saying, uh, you know, how great and how much inspiration I received from uh, those over in Bainbridge at Yes Magazine, you know, so I'm, I'm just sorry that this trip didn't allow me the opportunity to visit them. But uh, I just want them to know that they are always will be in my heart. Uh, from there to, uh, to Common Ground, again, we are an organization that's basically uh, begun in the aftermath of uh, Katrina with four individuals, $50 and a prayer. Uh, now we have uh, raised over three and a half million. We have been able to utilize those funds to provide direct services to over 180,000 people. We have uh, started two health clinics and helped with the formation of five others uh, health facilities. We operated the first health clinic in the aftermath of Katrina. We have a legal clinic we have a bower remediation program and a wetland restoration project because we know that our first line of, of defense uh, as it relates to a hurricane is our wetland. And then we also know that in our haste to remove this toxic, these Millions of tons, of metric tons of toxic flood water that had inundated New Orleans, we didn't treat it. We just released it into the most fragile environment that, uh, that exists in Louisiana, our wetlands, our lakes, our rivers and streams. So uh, this has been uh, the thing that I'm, mo I'm most proud of, but I guess... Uh, when you look at it, the main thing that I, I got to focus upon is the 20,000 volunteers that we have had at Common Ground in the, the three and a half years. Who are the real heroes? Like, it's such an honor to be sitting next to Christian, you know, because it's very seldom you find a teenager, you know, I mean, a teenager in America but most of our population, not just our teen population, but most of our population in general is drunk on prosperity. We don't understand the importance of civic responsibility, you know, but to see someone at that young age, you know, that's focused, you know, it's the way it is. It shows what can happen with the proper upbringing, you know, I, my hat have to go off to his parents, both his mother and father, and to the school, because what it shows, what we should be teaching in America, 
And it's so sad that these kids who have this understanding have to also get out and raise the funds to do what we as adults, you know, and this nation should be providing for them. I mean, I've seen uh, these kids get out and they're selling candy, you know, to raise money for this trip, you know. But I met, uh, I believe, the essence of a principal. And I know I've met uh, probably what I've conceived to be one of the greatest educators. And he's sitting right out there now. I wish he was in this room because uh, Joab not only, uh, you know, shown this in his action on, in, on uh, you know, as far as in his school, but he even have opened up his home, you know, and there's very few uh, people who have dedicated their lives that had the opportunity that Joe have, but have took full advantage of it so that, you know, that he's not just talking about educating to meet the needs of, of Seattle or of Washington or he's over the United States. But he has shown the essence of what made America great. And it wasn't because of the fact that we are a rich nation, because our... Our wealth only made us a wealthy nation. And it wasn't because of uh, our military capabilities. It only made us the most powerful nation to ever exist. But the essence of what made America great is, is the American people willingness to help others in time of crisis. And uh, Joe have shown this not only here in Seattle, in their school, not only here in Seattle, but also, and not only just in the United States, but globally. And, uh, you know, I tell anyone, if you haven't seen a real high school, make a visit on Cherry Street, you know, and you'll be amazed of what's coming out of that little building. When we talked to you a couple of years ago, you had made it clear that it was one of the motivations for Common Ground was because the government had completely abandoned New Orleans mm -hmm. and the people there. What has happened uh, in the last two years? Have things improved at all? Has the government stepped in at all? Not really. Not in the areas that have been most Im impacted by this hurricane. Uh, I could say they have stepped in because uh, to the degree that we are still under military occupation three years in the aftermath of Katrina with a pop <coughs> with a, excuse me, with a city population of just three hundred thousand and a police force that's now operating at a hundred and twenty, a hundred and fifteen to a hundred and twenty percent capacity as it relates to pre Katrina. You know, we still have the National Guards patrolling the streets. You know, uh so Again, as for security in the abandoned area, we are, we are see government, you know, participation. But as it relates to the rebuilding and restoring hope into the communities, no. Uh, my hat have to go off to that, to who I think is the greatest humanitarian to ever come down to New Orleans, and that's Brad Pitt who have came down, not just talking rhetoric, not trying to uh, to do a documentary, you know, or write a book, but who have came down to help, to truly help. Uh, in the lower night war where our focus in New Orleans is, uh, in an area one mile by four miles, we once had 3,000 homes, the highest home ownership of African Americans. And I didn't say bias, home ownership. We had the highest ownership of, of African Americans in this country. 
we lost almost 90% of the homes in this area. And uh, as I speak to you today, maybe, just maybe, uh, 200 homes have been renovated and maybe another 20 have been truly rebuilt. But Brad Pitt have came in with his organization that he founded, uh, Make It Right, and made a commitment to building 140 homes. That's one individual, at least two individuals, him and his wife. You know, if they could make a commitment to build 140 homes in this area, that not only lost the most homes, but the, have also have the highest loss of life. Because in the aftermath of Katrina, over a thousand people in this one by four mile radius, you know, perished during this hurricane, over a thousand. We have a, a elementary school, MLK, in which a minimum of one child out of every classroom perished during this hurricane. You know, I mean, there haven't been no trauma counselors other than the volunteers that have came down to offer a receptive ear to the to the plight. But it took it took Brad Pitt to really inspire hope. Yes, we was there. Common ground was there. But we didn't get the support, you know. I mean, even though we have served 180,000 people in the state in direct services and 160,000 in New Orleans, we are not even classified as a relief organization. We had an individual that came down and volunteered with us who was tragically killed in a bus accident, Meg Perry. Our city classified her not as a volunteer, not as a, a hero, but as a drifter. You know, so again, when you look at all, because I'm going to tell you, uh, if you're talking about normalcy, that's all you got to do is just go to the French quarters and see how fast they was able to recover. The convention center, the garden district, even the Superdome, which was retrofitted and uh, renovated in record time. The Saints once again become a losing team. You know, so everything is normal. You know, we had had the Essence Festival, we had the Bayou Classic, we had the Jazz Festival, we had the State of the Black World Conference, the NBA All-Stars. But if you take them all together, it wouldn't constitute uh, it wouldn't constitute a thousand people out of these hundreds of thousands of people who have visited New Orleans to even come to this area and see for themselves what exists. I mean, it's sad because when you take it, uh, when you look at it and you look at what these kids is doing, that is not only raising the money, going through the sacrifice of raising it and then going to take that audience trip down there, you know, and work. It saddened me and it's to say that in the city of New Orleans, we have six universities that haven't done nowhere near and they just had to come travel six miles or three miles less than 3,000 and haven't done anything. The highest schools that exist there, who is directly impacted by preserving our wetlands, haven't done anything. You know, and it shows the type of leadership that we still have, or the lack of leadership that we still have in the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. Well, it sounds like clearly the, the federal and the state and all the different government entities have failed in this, and it sounds... Like, I don't want to say they failed, because to say that they failed also is to imply that they tried. Mm. They didn't try. What about 
uh, with the exception of the people like Tristan, who's going to be going down, and and all the uh, people who have come down and helped. What about the bulk of the populace of the U.S.? I mean, I myself included. Um, once you know about that this situation exists, you know, and you turn your back on it, what kind of message do you want to say to uh, those people? Well, I'm going to tell you, I believe we had a cross world in human existence. As whether we preserve life as we know it, or we sit idly by and, and allow it to be squandered away. What type of legacy are we going to leave to our children and to our grandchildren? Will they have to inherit all the weapons, all the antiquated weapons of mass destruction that this nation have? A nation that if something is undone right now, the water is going to be so polluted, the air so polluted and a debt trillions of dollars of debt that's our legacy will they love us or will they curse us for leaving them this type of legacy this is their inheritance if we refuse to act if we don't save New Orleans, because I'm going to tell you, so goes New Orleans, so goes America. And so goes America, then so goes this planet, life as we know it on this planet. So it, it behooves everyone. Not because they want to, I mean, I'm not asking them just to come down and donate or, or help us at common ground. And God knows we need to help. But to get involved to understand the importance of civic responsibility. If these young people, if Christians can understand it, then when you're talking about people our age, you know, you know, something is wrong. Like I said, we're in a drunken state of prosperity. You know, I mean, we have less than 5% of the world's population, utilizing almost 30% of the world's resources causing almost 40% of the world's pollution. We can't go on like this. This planet cannot go on like this. And what, and what kind of example are we giving to the rest of the world? If the rest of the world was living in the same manner, it's just half, life would be extinct on this planet. So we have to get involved. We have to understand the great blessings that we have to be living in this democracy. We have to get involved. We can no longer sit idly by and only 60 to 70 percent participate in the electoral process. We can't sit around and just uh, complain about the politicians that we elect or have the opportunity to elect of what they are doing. And we have to understand because one of the greatest injustices I've seen I've been watching it over the last two uh, days, and that's what's happening to the governor of uh, Illinois. This is a man that has been charged and found guilty in two days. Now they're asking him to resign. You know, who convicted him? He was proven guilty before, uh, before the trial even began. You know, I mean, is that what, what, what we are coming to? So, again, it, it behooves all of us, every man, woman, and child who have been blessed to live in America, to get involved, to get involved. In, and if you can't come to New Orleans, you know, the fight injustice anywhere is the fight injustice everywhere. Get involved in your community. You know, I mean, it behooves us all. Yeah, I know with the uh, recent election that a lot of energy in the U.S. has been buoyed by, you know, change of administration at the White House. But it seems to me that far too many people look towards 
DC and or their elected officials as being the solution and then yes. somehow hold them responsible when nothing happens mm. when the real problem lies with the citizens themselves not getting up and really doing anything. That's right. I mean, yes, it may be a new day with Obama, a new president, but we have the old bureaucratic machines that would be right behind him, you know. And so change, many that will inspire, I'm doubtful, unless we all get involved. We have to truly clean house. It got to be a true new day. We can't sit, just elect the president and then fall back into our old ways. President Roosevelt brought about a new deal. But it wouldn't have been a new deal if it wouldn't have been a Huey P. Long or Upton Sinclair or those soldiers that marched from here to Washington with that bonus march. You know, so it, was the, it wasn't just him. It was the American people at that time that, that forced him to do than to make the decisions that he made, you know, and we have to do the same thing. We can't rely upon uh, Obama because he will not have a magic wand, contrary to what a lot of people think. You know, he do not have all the answers. Some of the answers is in that school right here in Seattle. Some of the answers is right here sitting next to me. You know, and we must afford them that opportunity. We have to understand again that we have to once again make America a great nation. You know, and that we are those who who confess to be people of conscience, people who have made a stand for environmental peace and justice. We must not only be the conscious of this of our particular movement. We must be the conscious of this nation, because if we refuse to become that conscious, then we will be a, consci a consciousness nation that's based upon greed and corruption. You know, we have to bring it about. And if we refuse to act, you can't fault no one else. You can't fault Bush. You can't fault anyone else but us. And I'm going to show you this, and, and that I would like for you to give Christian a chance to speak. In the aftermath of Katrina, when the word was given to evacuate, everybody who could evacuated the city. Our spiritual leaders, our community leaders, our political leaders, they all left. So it left the city with 150,000 people that had no means of escaping without any direction. That's the reason why social order fell apart in New Orleans. So we must learn from it, not being critical of those individuals, but we must learn to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes. It shouldn't be that a disaster in America turned into a tragedy. It shouldn't be the fact that, uh, that we sit out of the by while our entire infrastructure of this great nation is falling apart. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we are just about out of time. Uh, Malik, uh, any last words you'd like to share with people? Again, just as I said uh, earlier and throughout this interview, uh, we have to get involved. Let's not leave a legacy of grief to our children and our grandchildren. Let's stand up. Let's, let's clean up our environment. Let's make sure that they can enjoy the life that I know all of us wish for our children and our grandchildren. Let's make sure that, that they understand that it's nothing more precious and there's no 
noble of a cause, then how can we preserve life as we know it on this planet? Let's not just be a nation of destruction. You know, let's be a nation, a nation one that's based upon how can we lead the rest of this world you know, in a way that is righteous and just. I know that it's in us. I know that we can. Let's just get involved and do it. All right. Well, with that, I want to thank you both very much for coming in and spending time with us this thank morning. You. Thank you. And it's always an honor to be on your show. Thank you.